So I want to open the, the data drawer and I want to talk a little bit about this um, burden of illness concept. You know, in this, in this field, we, um, we talk a lot about return on investment. And one of the things that I like to do is when an organization that I'm working with asks about return on investment, I say, more than happy to provide that answer for you. If you could just do one thing for me, if you could show me the outcomes from your safety department, from your training department, from your auditing department, occupational health, disability management, I just want to see how they uh, monetize and, and their return on investment for those departments to make sure that our methodology when we're looking at employee health is as rigorous as those other departments. And oftentimes I get, well, we don't look at this in the training department. We don't look at this in safety department. And not to pick on those, but it's, it's important to note that many times when we're talking about health, employee health, and keep in mind many employee, employers say our employees are our most important asset, right? And so if that's the case, then that's fine that you want to address employee health and you want to look at the return on investment, but why is it being held to a different standard than some of the other departments within, within the organization? So just asking for equal treatment, that if you have an extensive training budget or an auditing budget or HR uh, budget, are you looking at that return on investment just like you're being asked for uh, employee health? So that's one point I like to make. The second point I'd like to make is that when we look at ROI and we jump right to that, we're kind of missing something, and that is the BOI, and that stands for the burden of illness. So how much are unhealthy employees costing the organization? What's our, what's our cost of poor health within this entity? And again, we talked earlier about breaking out health, breaking out productivity, not wanting to overstate the case, right? But we do want to make sure that we're able to account for that portion of productivity functionality that is, that is health related. So part of our, I think, issue within our industry, I'm talking about health improvement, health promotion, integrated health management, whatever you want to call it, is sometimes we focus too much on the healthcare side being the root cause of our programs or being the outcome from our programs. And what we like to point out is you really, if you want to answer that question around BOI, the burden of illness, the cost of poor health within your organization, you really want to look at all of these costs. And there may be others within your specific industry or your, your company that you want to take a look at so you are truly capturing that total cost of employee health within the organization. So you've probably seen this before, but it's been presented several different ways. But when you look at this area of presenteeism, and I define presenteeism as someone is at work, but they're not as productive as they could be because of some health-related issue. Now notice I, I say some health-related issue. It could be their health, obviously, but it could be that they're worried about their child in daycare right? And maybe they weren't feeling good the night before. Or maybe they're taking, they're in that sandwich generation and they're taking care of their parents and they're trying to find appropriate elder care. So there's some health issue that is keeping them from being as productive, as functional on the job as they could be if that health issue or health event wasn't there. So when you look at measuring that, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but when you take a look at measuring this, what we consistently see is that Presenteeism is many times three to five times higher than when you look at just the medical cost side. And when you compare it to absenteeism, it tends to be two to three times higher than absenteeism as well. So it's a very important metric when we're talking about that burden of illness and identifying all those costs related to health. And we know that within our senior management ranks, they, they sometimes question this. And what I what I like to do is ask senior management two questions. I say, do you think there's a connection between health and productivity? And I would say 99.9%, .9%, I haven't had one yet, say, no, they don't. They all say, yeah, I think there's a connection between health and productivity. And many times they want to give you examples. Um, and then if you ask them, can that be measured? 
And that's where the conversation goes all kinds of different ways. And then when you can say, well, let me show you a couple ways that we could possibly measure this and help you monetize that relationship between health and productivity. Many times when you get to that point, there is interest there. There's healthy skepticism. There's nothing wrong with that. But it starts to help them understand that there is a way for us to account for this cost and for a, us a way of understanding this burden of illness this total cost of employee health, looking at it from all aspects, not just from a healthcare uh, standpoint. The other question that we like to ask uh, senior management is when you talk about benefits, employee benefits, do you see that as an expense or as an investment? Because the answer to that question from a CEO, from a CFO, from a, uh, a someone on, in the C-suite is very telling in terms of how they view human, human capital and how they view uh, in addressing employee health within their organization. Because if they see it as an expense, what does every CEO and CFO try to do? They try to reduce that expense, right? If they see it as an investment, then what do we try to do? We always try to maximize our investment. So if human capital is our most important asset and we see it as an investment, and now we understand the cost of poor health within the organization, right? Now you're starting to build that business case. We're saying, I'm happy to answer the ROI question, but let's understand these other issues first before we get to answering that, that part of the question. And this is just another way uh, this was from the Integrated uh, Benefits Institute database, and we're um, putting together a, a module, a training program for uh, practitioners around the, around the world. And so we took the database and we broke it down to 1,000 employees. And the basic message here is when you look at the medical cost versus the productivity, again, it shows about that three and a half, uh, three to five difference between medical and, and productivity. So I want to show you these two graphs because they're really powerful and kind of stumbled upon this. This is, a, this is 200,000 health assessments. And in most health assessments, you're asked to rate your overall health status. You know, excellent, very good, good, fair, poor, right? And it's your, it's your perception of your health. And then in many health assessment instruments, there's that productivity, self-reported productivity part. Well, this is 200,000 responses, and look at this between those employees, admittedly, that perceive their health as excellent and very good versus those that perceive their health as poor, very poor, and what they perceive as the relationship between their productivity, their functionality, and their health status. So, so we saw that, and we, we thought, wow, that's, that's pretty powerful. But then we uh, got a hold of a database of 800,000 health assessments. And they tried to do, and decided to do the same, same question, answer the same question. So you really, if you're a statistician, you probably couldn't draw better graphs than this. And I, I like to show them because when we ask that question, do you think there's a connection between health and productivity to the senior management? And then you see results from a million health assessments and their personal, their personal perception. It sends a really powerful statement that employees understand, the employees see this connection between uh, health and functionality, productivity, performance, whatever it is that you want to talk about. So related to um, the burden of illness, identifying those costs, is there's several methodologies out there, but this is just one that I wanted to share with you, is looking at can you identify the modifiable risks within a population, looking at their health care costs, their prevalence rates, um, the productivity part, the salary part, the compensation, and can you put it into an algorithm where it starts to monetize the modifiable risks and the cost to the organization? And this is just one example. I believe this was, um, I believe this was a 24,000 employee population to give you some idea. Of, of that cost. So again, it's just one more uh, way of looking at what's the cost of poor health within the organization. Well, one way we, we like to explain this is that think about your organization, right? Or think about Hilton or ABC or Health Improvement Solutions. 
right? When you hire an employee, and say you're paying that employee $50,000, you're a for-profit organization, what are you hoping to get from that employee? Well, what the Bureau of Labor Statistics says that when ABC or Hilton or, some, or, or ABC hires an employee, they're looking to get three to five times that value back from, that, from every employee, right? So I've gotten into two conversations with um, CFOs around this, and the first one, I, I couldn't quite figure out what he was trying to get at. And finally he said, it was a multinational company. And he said, we use eight times. We use eight times so that when we hire an employee around the world, we're looking to get eight times that value back from that, from that employee. So I say that to you because one way to look at this is identify that health and productivity connection and monetize that cost, right? And then we use a factor of two because we want to be extremely conservative and we never want to overstate the case, but we use two times compensation to identify that portion of health that's related to productivity and what that cost is for the organization. And we, we look at that as a lost opportunity value. So if you have organizations that are talking about total quality management or you know, operational efficiency, whatever term or, or paradigm they're using, this really fits well because what you're talking about is identifying right a failure cost and saying then to the organization, so when you're faced with a failure cost of this magnitude in the past, what has the company invested to offset that? Or when you saw an opportunity for a new product, you had a new product and you know the opportunity in the marketplace, how much do you invest on the marketing side to get that back. Well, we can think of human capital, right, in that, in that same manner. So now we know what the opportunity is. We know the influence, negative influence, it's having on the organization's bottom line. We're addressing human capital just like we do equipment and other parts of our business that we look at as in that asset class for the organization. So I mentioned earlier around presenteeism, and this is just one tool that looks at measuring um, presenteeism. And this was, a, this was I think, an employee population of 6,500, 6, to give you some idea. So there's, other, there's several ways you can split this out, looking at the cost of absenteeism related to health, looking at presenteeism related to health. This overall work impairment, what this basically is, is before an absence event and after an absence event, and think about your own situation, or before presenteeism, after a presenteeism event, there's this other lost productivity. And many of the instruments that measure this account for that in some way. This, this particular instrument calls it overall additional work impairment. So you can see that however you divide it up, you get the, you get the same number. So this is looking at that self-report presenteeism cost from the organization employees uh, participating in this, either through a health assessment or random assignment, uh, however it is you want to do it. There are several methodologies that you can employ. But again, it gives you one other calculation, one other figure when you're looking at that cost of poor health. And then just one other point I wanted to make on this is that um, looking at the safety and health connection, we'll talk about this later too. What we did is we look at the relationship between health risks and safety incidents for a variety of, of organizations. And after doing this for, um, for a number of years, we, did try, we decided to treat our database as one company. So what the good news is, when we look at this for a lot of U.S. Uh, domestic companies, there's not enough safety incident data to really show statistical significance. So one of the reasons um, that we can't, directly show that correlation is because the, the numbers just aren't big enough. So we used our database knowing that we would have high power and we did the same analysis treating it as one organization. And these are the six modifiable risks in chronic conditions that we saw were related to a safety incident. Now, be clear, we're not saying that if you are a smoker you're going to have an accident. We're not saying it's a cause and effect. We're just saying there's, a, there's a, a statistical significant relationship here showing that employees that possess these risk factors or chronic condition 
have a greater likelihood beyond just chance to possibly have, a, have an incident at the, at the workplace. So I say that to you because if you work in a safety sensitive type industry, um, working with your safety department, again, going back, to, going back to that earlier point around integrated health management, looking at all the stakeholders, if you're not working with your safety department, you very well should be because helping you work together to see this relationship between health and safety can be really powerful uh, within your C-suite of your organization. Plus, it's just the right thing to do in terms of trying to help people and knowing that as we age in the workforce, right, and we may um, have these risks or, or, inherit, or get these risks or they're getting worse, that we are increasing our probability that they may have an incident at some point on the, on the job. So I wanted to mention this because there's the absenteeism, presenteeism, healthcare costs, all the other factors that we look at when we figure this burden of illness cost. If it's a safety sensitive industry, this one can be a really powerful metric to include. So this is just one example of how to put this into a, into a scorecard. What we like to do is take in all the data and then distill it down into what we call some headlines. You know, percent of healthcare costs related to lifestyle. What's the opportunity value? What's that total cost of employee health? And for example, looking at it on a scorecard, however you do it, um, you can start to look at the population score versus the participant score. And I won't get into the details of this, but I'll just tell you that it's normalized across a variety of populations so that you can look at the different uh, attributes of each of these bars and how it contributes to the score and ultimately employee health. I once saw um, Richard Eastman speak, and you may not know that name, this is a while ago, but he was the uh, director of the National Institute of Health and it was in D.C. And he, in the, I think it was 90s, he was very much a proponent within the government ranks around addressing health, employee health, and pr primary pre prevention. And he said something during that, his keynote, that I just thought was so powerful. He said, and I used to have a slide on this, but I didn't include it here, but it said, most interventions in medicine do not save money. Most interventions in medicine do not save money. And this is coming from the director of the National Institute of Health. And I, I, I like that statement to remind us that when we talk about return on investment of employee health, you know, we are being held many times to a different standard. That even in the medical community, that they don't even talk about ROI or, or cost savings. They talk about cost effectiveness, right? And did you get value from the treatment and did the treatment work? two very good things, but they stay away from the whole ROI argument. So I say that to you because what's happening um, in the field, and a lot of this goes back to the work that HERO is doing, Health Enhancement Research Organization, where they're looking at this VOI concept, the value on investment versus the return on investment. And they have a paper out, and you can get it from the, the HERO.org website if you want to. But um, it identifies seven uh, characteristics that make up this ver VOI, this value on investment index. And so cost is one factor, but it also looks at participation, satisfaction, productivity, all these other components. And the idea is, are you achieving a positive VOI from your program, getting away from that pressure always on is it a positive ROI.